So I just wanted to record a short video uh, addressing the topic of predestination or what's sometimes called election. The reason being this is a big theme of our uh, Bible passage from this last Sunday, Ephesians chapter 1. And I guess there wasn't time to address this topic in depth, but it's a bit of a prickly topic and one that's good to have a little bit of uh, space uh, to address. Basically, predestination or election, as it's sometimes called, is the idea that God has chosen those who would be his. He's chosen those who would uh, believe, uh, be saved, receive eternal life. And he did so before the beginning of time. Well, I sometimes think perhaps this idea is a little bit like a pineapple. Look, there we are. I've even got a, a visual aid for us. Um, because you look at a pineapple or you feel a pineapple and you definitely wouldn't want to eat it. Uh, it's uh, a prickly and spiky and uh, uh, not the sort of thing you want to sink your teeth into. But actually, if you don't ever sink your teeth into a pineapple, of course, cutting it open first so you get the, the juicy flesh inside, will you be missing out on the delicious, tasty fruit? And I think the doctrine, if you'll bear with me with this illustration, the doctrine, the teaching of predestination and election is a little bit like this pineapple. On the surface, it seems prickly and spiky. There's a lot of, lot of difficulties. But if we ignore it or overlook it as Christian believers, well, we're missing out on the incredible truth that God has given us, the incredible truth that we find within. So let me say a little bit about it. Because if you're a Christian, if you're someone, as Ephesians chapter 1 puts it, someone who is in Christ, then before the creation of the world, God sat down and said, I want you. He sat down and said, I choose you. Just listen from verse 4 of Ephesians 1. It says, he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. And then again in verse 11, in him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will. Did you see it's quite clear? Chosen, uh, predestined, before he created the world, where God knew you, he chose you to be his own. No one was twisting his arm. It wasn't by chance that he somehow rolled a dice to pick those who would be his, but he knew you and he chose you. You know, perhaps as you hear that, you don't feel like the sort of person that God would choose. Perhaps you've never got chosen for anything in life. Well, let me tell you, if you have heard and responded to the Christian message, the Christian gospel, responded with faith, then God chose you. And it's not even that God somehow at that point looked ahead into the future that he could foresee who it is that would uh, believe in him or have faith. It's not that at all. No, God deliberately chose you, not because of anything you did, but because he wanted you. Did you notice in our verses we said it was according to his, his pleasure and his will? We said it was according to his plan that he is working out. Well, John Stott simply puts it like this. He says, you becoming a Christian was due neither to chance nor to your choice, but to God's own sovereign will and pleasure. And John Piper, as he writes about this topic, the amazing truth of predestination, he says that it silences pride and awakens praise. Silences pride, but awakens praise. Well, how does it make you feel, this idea? How do you react to this? It can be really difficult for us, can't it? The idea of election or predestination, the idea that God chose some but also passed over others. So let me just suggest four possible reactions that people might have, and I'll say a little bit about them, because the first reaction may be along these lines. Well, does that mean that I'm not free? Does that mean that I'm not free to choose and decide things that I want? Well, do you know what? The Bible consistently teaches that God has not created us as robots, somehow just uh, automatically acting out all that he has predestined for us to do in advance. Now, the Bible says the choices we make really are very real choices. And that's our experience, isn't it? That the things we choose in life are very real. So that's the first reaction. The second reaction might be, do you know what? As I hear about that uh, teaching of predestination, it doesn't sound fair. Why didn't God choose everyone? Well, let me just say that if God were to really act fairly, well, he wouldn't actually have chosen any of us. 
Because our reaction to God, every single one of us, is rejection of him, turning away from him. None of us actually deserves to be chosen. So the question should actually not be, why did he choose some? But why did God choose any of us at all? And to get the answer to that, well, we find that in the, in the, the heart of God, his love uh, and his mercy. Well, here's a third reaction that you might have. Well, surely that means as a church, we don't need to bother with evangelism. If God has already chosen those that are his and nothing is going to change that, well, why do I need to bother? Well, let me again tell you how John Stott um, addresses this. He says, the preaching of the gospel is the very means God has appointed to deliver from blindness and bondage those whom he chose in Christ before the foundation of the world and to set them free to believe in Jesus. There's a lovely little bit in Acts when Paul is in the city of Corinth and uh, the Lord just says to him, keep on speaking and don't be silent for I have many people in this city. And it sounds like as he says this that there are many people that are his, those that he has already chosen, but they've not yet come to believe. They are his through his divine election before the beginning of the world. But now he wants them to come to believe through Paul preaching to them in that place, him reaching out to them with the great news of the, of the gospel. And so maybe the Lord has people that he has chosen in your neighbourhood, uh, your workplace, in your school, among your friends, in your family. And they will come to hear and believe through you, through your witness to them. Well, here's a fourth possible reaction to election or predestination. And it might be this. My head hurts. I just cannot get my head around it. It's too hard for me to work out how God could have chosen those that would be his before the beginning of time. And yet the choices that I make are now and every day are very real choices. Well, I think that's OK uh, to feel like that. But to say that actually this truth is not supposed to make our heads hurt, but our hearts warm. You know, the right response to election and predestination is praise. If you read Ephesians chapter one, then it repeats time and again. Blessed be God to the praise of his glory. Article chapter Article 17 the, um, of the Articles of the Church of England, kind of the foundation statements um, of the Church of England says this. Our election in Christ is full of sweet, pleasant, unspeakable comfort to godly persons. Well, why is it? Why is it a truth that we don't want to miss out on? Uh, despite all the difficulties, again, a bit like our pineapple, why shouldn't we be put off by all the difficulties? But rejoice in this truth and let it lead us to praise. Well, because I think it speaks of God's complete and utter commitment to us. If he chose you, before the foundation of the world. Well, your relationship to him, his commitment to you is permanent. He's not going anywhere. It's been set in stone before time. It's part of God's unchanging and unstoppable plan. Because God chose us, our salvation and our relationship with him depends on him and on his will, not on our choice or our will, where we perhaps want one thing one minute and one thing the next. You know, you may think in life that you are holding on to God, but I think the doctrine of election, predestination, this teaching, well, it shows us that actually God is holding on to you. He's holding on to me. God is holding on tight to those he has chosen and he will never let us go. Well, I hope some of that is helpful. I'm sure there's still plenty of uh, questions. Uh, do get in touch if you want to uh, speak more about it. But don't be put off by the prickly, spiky truth of God's predestination. But uh, dig in and don't miss out on the great joy, the great praise and the great comfort that this truth brings uh, to believers.